Hello, my name is Trent Milam and I am serving as an AmeriCorps member for Green Mountain Conservation Group this year. You may have heard of GMCG's Less Plastic Initiative, a program started a few years ago focused around plastic education, plastic research, talking about how we can use less plastics, how plastics affect our environments. There's plastics everywhere. We have them in our households. They're all over the place, right? But the simple question arises of what really are plastics? You know, I had to go back and do some research myself um, because it's an item that we use every day. Uh, but we kind of take it for granted that it's there, but where does it come from? What are plastics? Well, it turns out that plastics were first used over 3,500 years ago by ancient civilizations. But this was a form of natural plastic. It came from sap from gum trees, and they used it to make rubber balls. Today, the plastics we have are very different. They're synthetically produced. But that's only been occurring for the last 150 years or so. Prior to that, every form of plastic that existed was a natural form of plastic. But in the last few years, plastics have increased from over 0.5 million tons in 1950 to over 260 million tons in 2010 to then over 360 million tons in 2018. So plastics are increasing and the production of them is increasing as well. So what are the building blocks of plastics? On the molecular level, plastics are made out of polymers, which are long chains of flexible compounds. And that's what makes plastics so useful. They're easily bendable, you can easily heat them up and pressurize them to make different materials. Today's plastics are synthetically produced, like I said. And what that means is that they are made from man-made fossil fuel sources, uh, mostly crude oil and natural gas. So how do we get from these simple chains of molecules called monomers to the bendy, flexible material we know as plastic? Well, it turns out there are six steps in this process of forming plastic. Step number one is extracting fossil fuels from the ground. This includes crude oil, petroleum, natural gas, and these are non-renewable resources, which means there is a finite amount of them, so as we extract them and use them for our own uses, they are not replenishing themselves. Step number two in the process is then transporting those fossil fuels to a refinery plant, where they are first transformed into the building blocks of plastics, known as ethane, which comes from crude oil, and propane, which comes from natural gas. Step three in this process is further transporting the propane and the ethane to a second refinery plant, where they are further broken down into even more complex polymers. These polymers are known as propylene and ethylene. Then from here, step four is adding a catalyst. A catalyst is a substance that increases the rate of a chemical reaction. And this catalyst will form what's known as a resin, which is really the building block of plastic materials. You have ethylene, which then becomes polyethylene, and propylene, which becomes polypropylene. Step five is then heating and cutting these polymers into little plastic pellets called nurdles. These nurdles are then transported to a manufacturing plant. And at the manufacturing plant is where step six occurs, where manufacturers will shape and mold using heat and pressure these plastic pellets into the materials that we know today as plastics. Plastics are labeled with a number, usually one through seven. You may be familiar with that number system. And that number is solely based on the foundational material that makes up the plastic, which is the resin. So what's left over after this entire process? Well, it's what we know today as plastics. These are very low weight, low cost, durable, and flexible materials. So what's not to love about them? In fact, their usefulness and cheap cost is exactly why we have produced so many of them. Well, it turns out that their durability also has a downside, and it's well known at this point that plastics have some harmful effects on our environment. When you use a plastic material and then throw it away, it can persist in the environment anywhere from a decade to a century to even thousands of years. So you may say, well, if they're such durable materials and it takes so long for them to break down over time in the environment, why don't we just reuse them and not throw them away? Well, it's a great thought, but it turns out that, unfortunately, about 50% of our plastics produced are single-use plastics, which means they are designed to be used one time and then thrown away. Take, for example, this plastic shopping bag. On average, we use a bag like this for 12 minutes. Think about that. We pick up some groceries, we put them in the bag, we throw it away about 12 minutes later on average, and that bag could persist in a landfill for up to a thousand years. Think about all the steps that went into making this bag, the heating of the polymers, the transporting, the formation of new polymers. All of that 
boiled into that material that we only use for about 12 minutes. Other than their inability to biodegrade, plastics pose other problems. It is well documented at this point that plastics are extremely harmful to wildlife. Over 260 species, including invertebrates, turtles, fish, seabirds, and mammals, have been reported to ingest or become entangled in plastic debris, resulting in impaired movement and feeding, reduced reproductive output, lacerations, ulcers, and death. For example, 95% of fulmers washed ashore dead in the North Sea have plastic in their guts, with substantial quantities of plastic being reported in the guts of other birds, including albatross and prions. Small filter feeders are also ingesting microplastic fragments, which can potentially pass toxins up through the food chain to other organisms. Microplastics are small plastic particles invisible to the naked eye that exist in all environments due to our plastic use as human beings. Many of us are probably already familiar with the garbage patch that exists in the ocean, a big floating mass of human waste that travels with the global ocean currents. Floating plastic waste has also been known to act as a transportation device for invasive species. Many people wonder what the effects of plastic are on human beings. Scientifically speaking, this is still unknown. However, some studies have shown that the compounds in plastics have altered human hormones in the body. It is for these reasons that the continued plastic production and consumption at the rates that we are producing and consuming plastics has become a really big issue. We often think that when we throw something away, it goes away, right? We don't have to deal with it anymore. But where really is a way? I mean, 50% of our plastics, about half of them are single use, which means they're sitting somewhere in a landfill. And landfills can also leach harmful chemicals into the soil, so they pose their own problems as well. How about those plastics that we recycle? In theory, plastics are recyclable, which is great. The more that we can recycle and reuse products, the better. However, plastic packaging frequently uses a wide variety of materials, such as different polymers, as well as metals, adhesives, ink, pigments, and when you combine all these together in one product, it makes it very difficult to recycle, which is why we have a lot of recycling issues with plastics. In addition to that, when you have polymers made up of all these different kinds of molecules, and they're so different at the molecular level, trying to convert one plastic into another is very difficult, and oftentimes recycling one into another is not compatible. You would almost need a different recycling stream for each type of plastic, which is not economical. In addition to all this, the recycling process itself involves the collection, sorting, and breaking down of plastic materials. And this also requires a lot of energy input and fossil fuels. So it's not great for the environment. It's important to know that wherever you live, you can only probably recycle certain types of plastics. Here in Effingham, New Hampshire, uh, we take numbers one, two, and five. So make sure to pay attention to that because only some of your plastics may be recycled. So what can we do as individuals when it comes to plastic use? We can start by making just some small changes in our lives that reduce our plastic use altogether. For example, we could use a reusable water bottle and fill this up instead of buying new plastic water bottles each time. We could go to the grocery store with a reusable shopping bag and use that and reduce our use of single-use plastics like the plastic bag we saw earlier. There's a study that was done in 2018 by the UN Environment and WRI that found that 127 countries in the world have some form of plastic single-use bag legislation, which is a great start. We can use things like bar soap over liquid soap. These are just small changes that we can make. It might seem very daunting as an individual, and you may think, well, what can I do just as one person to make an impact? Well, it turns out that big changes come from a bunch of people making small changes and that you really can make a difference. There are many success stories across the world when it comes to reducing plastic use or repurposing plastics, and I would just like to highlight a few of those to end the video. It's amazing what we can do with just a little bit of creativity. There was a supermarket in Thailand that started using banana leaves to wrap their vegetables as opposed to those thin plastic sheets that we normally see. Think about that. Those thin plastic sheets are usually used for maybe two seconds and then thrown away. But the banana leaves is a much more sustainable way to wrap those vegetables. Finally, another story comes out of Kenya in 2017. A woman opened a factory there and recycles plastic products and plastic waste into bricks that are stronger than concrete. This is amazing, and it's amazing what a little bit of creativity and passion can do. You really can make a difference, 
and it starts with small changes. Don't forget to check out GMCG's website to hear more about our Less Plastic Challenge and to participate in that. The details will be on our website. And check out some of our other videos as well regarding plastics and plastic use. Consider maybe doing a plastic audit and taking a look at inventorying your own plastic use at home. Thank you for listening and happy Earth Day.